2024, moving into 2025, Cupidus is still viable, still good for Hydra. There's not too many other places that you're going to use him. Back then, during the Cupidus Venus stone skin meta, you could use him to place Plat. That's how I did it when I first placed Plat. But nowadays, you don't really use him in Arena. There's other dungeon gods, especially now that Thor is out, to help you out with the dungeon. So I'm not going to bother showing you guys that. And, um, you know, obviously not Arena. But he's still somebody who can help you get through the teams if you need him, right? He's a great damage dealer. In Hydra, which is where we're going to focus on, you want to probably put him in normal and hard. He's going to do wonders for you. If you have Venus, which is his partner, his lover, and I love my wife, by the way, then you could probably bring him up to uh, Brutal and Nightmare. I personally use him in Nightmare Hydra, but I've got a great supporting cast and I've got the gear to be able to do it, luckily enough. As a damage dealer, as with most, you're looking for gear that ignores defense. So something like Savage, Merciless, Slayer works pretty well because Slayer will give, if you can get a nine piece, you get additional AOE damage, get ignore 30%. Merciless has 35. So if you put like Merciless, uh, six piece Merciless and like Cruel, that's 40% ignore that's pretty huge lethal cruel and savage are your ignore defense um, sets you're totally fine doing what i did when i first got cupidus he was my first legendary at level 35 i basically ran him in three sets of cruel for 15 percent ignore ignore enemy defense and that's totally fine if you don't have any ignore defense then just focus on the stats which we're going to get to priority stats just off the bat are going to be attack and crit damage and we'll dive more into that. I recently rebuilt him because I was just going on a, a binge, sort of just rebuilding some old champions that I felt needed to get updated. He isn't completely optimized yet. I need to ascend and enchant his gear all the way. You might be looking at this and saying, oh, this is pretty end game gear, pay to win gear. It is, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but it's the concept behind it. If I'm telling you guys priority stats are attack, crit damage, make sure you have 100% crit rate, a decent amount of survivability like HP and defense, then you need to take this information, think for yourself, and apply it to your account. Scale it to your account. If you can't get 6,000 attack, drop it down to, I don't know, 2,500 attack. If you can't get 250 crit damage, drop it down to like 150 crit damage. Then when eventually you do get the gear, you know what to strive for. It's important that you understand the mechanics, the priorities for each champion. You do that enough, you won't have to watch a video. And just real quick, I wanted to reiterate that um, I haven't fully maxed it up because I just rebuilt him. I'm going to wait for CVC to fully ascend his gear and, and all that. Now, uh, I forgot to hit on this a little bit more. I would prefer that he has more speed. I like my damage dealers to have at least 200 to 220 speed at best, but uh, he's just not there yet. Also, because of his A2, you want accuracy. So for me personally, I would aim for around two, 250 accuracy to be able to reliably place the HP burns in, in Hydra. Um, and I'm saying 250, obviously the more that you can get, the better, but it's just really hard to get accuracy on uh, damage sets. But uh, you know, most of his damage isn't going to come from the HP burns. It's just nice to have whenever it does proc. Obviously I go in with Venus, so HP burns are covered. It's mostly his A1 uh, that swipes at the enemies that I really care about. So I don't prioritize the accuracy too much, but it would behoove you to do so. For the gloves, ideally you want crit damage, but if you don't have crit damage gloves, go for attack. You want attack percent on the chest, and you want speed or attack percent on the boots. This is kind of subjective. Personally, I'm running him with more speed because I feel like the more turns he takes, the better. But then again, some people might say if you have Cupidus, then you could run attack percent boots and lower the speed a little bit so that he just counterattacks every single time. A1. AOE damage increases by 15% if the target has any debuffs, which most of the time, especially going into Hydra, he will. AOE HP burns, pretty helpful. A3, this one hits pretty hard, increase attack, and then hits really hard with a chance to place HP burn on all enemies if it kills somebody and it can't be resisted. Now this is where the cookie starts to bake in the oven. When you have Venus, his attacks will inflict 25% more damage and he will always counter attack when attacked. And that's why during the Cupidus Venus stone skin meta, he was OP because Venus allowed him to be able to counter attack and do more damage, but we're not going to jump into that. All battles, 33%. I still use him in Centranos. The blessing that I chose for him is Soul Reap. Soul Reap is a pretty good one. Basically, a Reaper will come out and do damage based on the remaining HP an enemy has. And the further up you go, the more stats you get and the, the more the threshold is. As always, do not blindly copy masteries, but go ahead and feel free to blindly copy these masteries. We're taking extra crit rate, extra crit damage, 
We're taking increased damage inflicted to targets with less than 40% HP by 8% because especially in, in Hydra, um, a lot of times their health gets pretty low and when they do get lower, you want to be able to do more damage. Life Drinker to be able to heal whenever our HP is below 50% or less. We're taking Cycle of Violence, so that his A2, which is basically the only other move that he's going to be using, to decrease the cooldown of that HP burn. Because when you put burns up in Hydra, it's just helpful all around. It's more damage. It allows you to get through the Poison Mist also. Increased damage would bring it down with those who have max HP. Higher max HP, that's pretty much everybody. And then his A1 is going to get a boost to damage up to 10% the more he uses it. And we're taking Helm Smasher. 50% chance of ignoring 25% of the target's defense. And that's in addition to everything else that he already has. If you wanted to, you could take War Master, but this has a cap damage that you could put 4% or 10% of the enemy's max HP. Helm Smasher does not have a cap. Increasing resistance, we're going to decrease the damage that he receives from crit hits because crit hits hit really hard. You want to make sure you're surviving through that because he does have a little bit of a an issue with staying alive but you know that's that's just you know it is what it is you just have to find a way to work around it and that's a really good way of doing that if you wanted to you could also take blast proof but i feel like eight percent from crit hits which are the ones that really do more damage is better to have rejuvenation increase the healing and shields that he receives a uh, chance to remove a random debuff and then delay death, some damage mitigation up to 6% over the long period of time, and then more counter attacks because uh, what else are you gonna choose? So I don't think I need to waste time showing you guys uh, the other places that he's useful in. Uh, I was using him in Dragon before, uh, early stages of Dragon to help clear the waves. So he does very well there. Uh, he does have play in Spider with the AOE, so that's pretty good too. Faction Wars, obviously he's gonna help you out. Uh, doing more damage in Faction Wars for you. Okay, here we are in the middle of a fight against normal Hydra. We have Cupidus in here. I wanted to throw Thor in here just to kind of give a uh, a comparison for damage. Razzlevarg is in here also because he's doing damage. We have Cupidus and Venus together. Now, Cupidus is basically relying on his A1s. It's nice when the A2s pop off. Anytime Rotos is hit, he's going to counterattack and he counterattacks quite often. But really, we're looking for damage off of his um, just A1, basically, because we're not relying too much on the A2, although it does hit pretty well. Let's see, 165, one, we got 258 there from his A1 on the decapitated heads, 152. I saw a 52 there on the head all the way on the right. Thor is just smacking. This is not supposed to be a Thor showcase, but we're trying to focus on Cupidus here. And then having him paired with Cardio is pretty nice, because anytime he attacks... He's doing um, an AOE, and that's just always nice to have because sometimes, especially against the head of mischief where you can't target it, having an AOE damage dealer, we worry less about that head. So this is the head that I'm talking about. It steals buffs. It's hard to target him, but because I have, oh, I mean, we, we can target him now because we have Hex. We've got a curse set on, on Cupidus or on uh, Venus, but before that, oh my gosh, that reflect damage. Come back come back yeah these heads are really messing up my damage dealers here cupidus with his aoe's makes it so that we don't have to worry too much about this head here all right we ended the fight about five minutes in 51 million damage razzlevarg did more damage than cupidus but he is in a relentless set cupidus did seven mil thor just being thor but keep in mind thor is in a nine piece slayer set he has a five star ascension do you think cupidus is outdated and again i'm biased he has a special place in my heart because he was my very first legendary champion and he was in the team that I used to clear Nightmare Hydra to get that one key uh, way back then before my current team. Outdated for sure, but I still like him.